Hey guys, and welcome back to Z3 Cubing. Today I'm going to show you the world's new best clock by far from Chi Yi. So today I have an unboxing of a very interesting and actually quite revolutionary puzzle. And that's because this is what I would consider the last WCA event to actually get a reasonable turning mass produced option onto the market. So this is the first time this puzzle has ever been released by a real speed cubing company. Sounds exciting, right? Well, yeah, but that's in contrast to the fact that it's everybody's least favorite WCA event the clock. Okay, okay, I may have made that sound a little bit more exciting than it really is. I know that most people really don't care about the clock as a WCA event. In fact, most cubers probably don't even own one. But I seriously do believe that this is actually one of the most revolutionary speed cubing releases we have ever seen. And so be sure and stick around so I can show you why. So since the Rubik's clock was released in the 80s, there haven't really been a whole lot of different brands that have reproduced the same puzzle. So here's the original Rubik's clock that I have added some magnets to to make it turn a little bit better. And right out of the box, all of these turn terribly. You have to break them in a ton, lubricate them, and in the modern day, put magnets on them, really just to make it a viable option for speed cubing. Because this is in the World Cube Association, you can go to an official cubing competition and you can compete in this event. And so it is a big problem that there hasn't been a good clock produced since, well, the 80s, if you can even call the Rubik's one good. And yeah, they don't even make these anymore. You pretty much have to get them secondhand used off of eBay, and they're kind of expensive sometimes. Now, there have been a few other brands that have produced clocks in the years since, like Lingao has always been one of the popular ones. I think Shangxiao even made one recently, but those have never been even as good as the original Rubik's clock. We have really been in need of a real speed clock for a long time. And that is where Chi comes in. So let's get this clock out of here. Looks like we have a little stand. I'm not sure. I guess it just kind of sits on there. That's cool. We also have an instruction booklet as well as a few of these cards that normally come with them. But let's get this out of the way and have a look at this puzzle. Wow, that just looks that looks incredible. I love the black and white color scheme. It just looks so unique and I guess modern compared to the old blue and light blue color scheme. Yeah, it looks awesome. There's so much contrast. I bet that'll help when solving too. Uh, let's try out the pins. They're definitely a lot lighter than the ones on the Rubik's clock. They are magnetic, but I think that's actually a good thing because it's super easy to push them back and forth. It takes almost no effort, but they will of course stay in place and they won't fall down like on the Lingao ones. And wow, I just can't get over how good this thing looks up close. It's probably really hard to capture on camera, but if you get kind of close, there's all these little tiny grooves in the plastic. It just looks really cool. Now let's do a real quick size comparison to the original Rubik's clock, just kind of comparing them like face to face like this. It looks like they're about the same size. Looks like uh, the Rubik's clock may be a little bit bigger in diameter by maybe a few millimeters. And then in thickness, looks like they're exactly the same size. All right, now it's time for what you've all been waiting for, our first turns of the clocks themselves. I am really excited for this. All right, oh. Okay, I really like that. It's actually really loose compared to the Rubik's clock. I can kind of just spin it. Yeah, that went over 360 degrees, but it's also super precise and it clicks into place very nicely. So already I can tell you that this is miles ahead of the Rubik's clock, which was already the best clock on the market. Basically the problem with this one is right out of the box, it comes super duper stiff and you just have to break it in. Like you can barely turn it, especially when all four pins are up. When they're all down, except for that one, it is noticeably easier to turn. But if you've ever tried turning an out of the box Rubik's clock with all the pins up, you'll know that it is super stiff. So that is the biggest problem with the clock, just trying to get it so that it has that little click, so it'll click into each of those 12 places, but it also isn't too stiff that it takes a ton of effort to get all the way around the clock. So that is something that Chi has actually accomplished with everybody's favorite cubing innovation, magnets. The magnetic pins have been around for a while now, but the idea of making the clocks themselves magnetic is just insane. You can tell how crazy it is just because of how long it's taken to get mass produced. This puzzle, other than the pins, has 204 magnets inside of it to get these to click into place. You can tell because there's nine different clocks and each of those clocks has 12 different positions it has to be in. Now, I'm not sure exactly how the magnets are arranged, but I am really interested to see just how they managed to pack so many magnets inside of here. So I'm definitely gonna be taking apart this puzzle completely later in the video. So be sure and stick around for that. But yeah, that is why the Chi clock is just so revolutionary. Nobody has been able to match the Rubik's clock for so many years. And now Chi has just gone so far beyond it that there is now no reason to buy any clock other than this one. Also, I think I've had it sideways for that whole time, but whatever. Now that does bring up the issue of price. This is a $30 clock, which I'll admit is a lot of money to spend on a puzzle that you might not use very often, especially in the day of like $9 three by threes that pretty much beat everything else on the market. But yeah, a Lingao clock is definitely a lot cheaper. A Rubik's clock, depending on where you get it, can be a lot cheaper. But you know, by the time you get all the magnets and you put in all the work to gluing them on and breaking it in and lubing it and taking it apart and all that, at that point, you're gonna be approaching $30 anyway, if not already exceeded it, plus you've spent many, many hours just breaking in a puzzle that's not even as good as this one. So yeah, I would totally recommend this to anybody who wants 
months to buy a clock in the year of 2020. So I'll just go ahead and say it. If you're at all into clock or clock speed cubing, then absolutely go ahead and buy this puzzle if you're looking to get a new one. And even if you wanna just learn how to solve a clock or maybe you're thinking of going to a competition that offers it, I would still definitely recommend saving up the $30 to buy this one if you're thinking of buying a clock at all. It is 100% worth it, even for three times the price of something like a $10 Shang Shao. So if you're looking to buy a clock, I would highly recommend this one. Definitely go ahead and get it at thecubicle.com, link in the description, and make sure to use discount code Z3Cubing for 5% off while you're there. Anyway, now that I've given it a pretty strong recommendation, let's go ahead and prove how good it is by doing a quick solve. So let's just scramble it up. Man, this is so nice. Like, you can just scramble this thing up in seconds. This is amazing. All right, so let's do some inspection. I haven't solved the clock in so many months, but I think I remember what to do. All right, so let's begin in three, two, one, and go. So as you're watching this solve, I'm obviously not the best clock solver in the world. I averaged like 15 seconds back when I actually practiced, but even after doing just this one solve, I can definitively say that this is so much better than the Rubik's clock. It's just so much easier to move every single one of those clocks into place. It's indescribable how big of a difference it makes, and it honestly makes me want to practice clock again. I guess the biggest difference is just how smooth and effortless the turning is. Like you still have that really nice precise click at every single position, but there's just such little resistance compared to on a Rubik's clock where it just feels stiff. Even a really old broken in one like this, it takes a lot more effort to turn it. Oh, and this is one of the other problems that happens a lot with the Rubik's clock. You'll be aiming for one position, like the 12 o'clock position here, but as you can see, we're stuck halfway in between the 11 and 12 o'clock positions. And so as you can see, all the pins are stuck. Everything is locked up. We have a clock up here and we have to move it back into place before anything turns. That has not happened at all in the GE clock yet. It just kind of always goes into place. It's really hard to get it in between positions. The magnets just make it snap really clearly at one position or the other. You can't really end up in the middle. All right, now I promised I would take it apart, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it here. I'm honestly a little bit terrified for this because even taking apart the original Rubik's clock was honestly pretty terrible. It's just so many different pieces all kind of flying in all different directions. I can't imagine what it's gonna be like with 204 magnets on the inside. But let's go ahead and have a look now that everything is unscrewed so we can get this cover off here. It's a little bit tight, but I think if we just pull it out on every side, it should come right up. Here we go, all the screws are out. Here's the clock itself. Uh, it's still looking pretty similar. And okay, what do we do from here? Is it glued together or something? Okay, no, it was just really tight, but we can go ahead and open it up here, and okay, that's not nearly as bad as I thought it was. Uh, actually, yeah, that looks very similar to the Rubik's clock. That won't be too hard to reassemble, but yeah, it looks like we have all the magnets in every single one of these spokes on every clock, just like I said. Oh, okay, I think I get it. So we don't have one magnet in the frame for every single one of the magnets on one of these clock pieces, but it still adds up to over 200 magnets because we have more than nine of the clock pieces because there's white ones and there's black ones, which all have magnets on them. And these are all attracting to these inner pieces, plus the pins. That is just crazy. Let's get a magnet out and see. Huh, so it attracts right there and it attracts right there. So it looks like there's two spots on every one of these black pieces, interesting, but 12 magnets on each of these. And because of the way that everything kind of snapped into place on the Rubik's one, you kind of had to use friction to get it to fit in. And so you had all these springs everywhere and it made it more complicated. So I think the mechanism actually got simpler by adding magnets to it. So I don't know, maybe we'll be seeing more magnetic clocks out in the future. But on the other hand, this one is so good that I'm not sure if anybody's gonna be able to beat them. But yeah, anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. Anyway, I don't really feel like assembling this right now, so I'll do it later. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I definitely enjoyed getting my hands on this amazing new clock. But I hope you guys learned something and found it interesting, and I'll see you guys next time.